Hi everybody, uh, welcome to video number four. So today is a really warm day. I can really feel the, the warm air, uh, even though it's a bit overcast. Uh, quite windy where we are, but it's warm, so I'm still not going to go into the bees at the moment. I'm looking for what's actually going on. Uh, you don't really want to start getting in uh, at this time in the season when the queens should be laying. Pollen should hopefully be getting in uh, and new bees, uh, will be, eggs will be laid and new bees will be hatching out. So I'll take you through the three hives. This one here, I think I've decided the location is just too exposed at the moment. Uh, there's just too much wind goes through from either side. So I'm going to either move it, although we've got limited options just at the moment, or fence it off. Uh, however, this is the, the green hive. So what do we see here? So what we can see uh, is, actually, have a wee quick look at this guy here. You can see the pollen? Yes, a she. So there's a lot of dead bees here, down here. But that is normal because uh, bees don't live particularly long. Sometimes uh, a couple of months or a few can last up to six months over the winter or very short in the summer. So one thing is, even though this looks really horrendous with all the dead bees, they're just clearing out the hive. Uh, with everybody that's died, but there's a lot of bees flying, as you can see they're coming in and out, and if you look carefully you'll see there's quite a bit of pollen going in, every few bees or so, uh, they're bringing pollen in. The pollen is critical for rearing new bees uh, before they hatch out, it'll provide protein, uh, as, long as, as well as pollen they'll need nectar and water. So this hive here, uh, I was quite worried about it, but I think it's looking okay today. The fact that there's pollen going in suggests the queen's in there and she's laying. I'm not going to, there's a huge amount of pollen on this lady just about to land. You can see it. You can just, there we go. And another one. Yeah, so there's plenty of pollen. So this, this hive here, looking okay. Uh, and I'm just going to leave them for the time being. I'll go down to the other two hives down at the bottom and see how they're actually getting on as well. I see it's really warm, uh, it's lovely, it's just quite windy at the moment, uh, which can be a problem. If you look back at that hive there, you'll see that the I put just a couple of slabs just to give a bit of protection from the wind as the bees come in to stop them get blown off course as they're trying to get into the hive. So, uh, I'd say longer term, I've got some thoughts about where we could put that hive. But I don't want three all to be next to each other. So here's the next one. Uh, this one's usually always quite busy. Now in case anyone wonders, I know it seems a bit messy, like why have I got wheels here? But actually, these old wheels are great because I can just sit down here at the side of the hive and watch. Now if you just sit for a minute and watch carefully, this one, loads of pollen going in. I mean, every second or third bee is going in with pollen. So, I'm quite happy uh, with progress here. One thing, I can sit at the side and the bees will have no bother. Look at the amount of pollen. They don't mind too much. I mean, I might get stung, but they're not really interested. I'm not attacking them. But if I stand at the front of that hive, I can guarantee you within 10 or 15 seconds, yeah. One of the guard bees will make beeline, will come straight for me and it will sting me. It will sting me and I will run away. And that's it done its job. So at the entrance of any strong uh, hive colony, there, there are guard bees and that is literally their job. You've got all the different roles for bees and what they actually do. Uh, you'll start off after a bee hatches out. It will be on basic cleaning duty. Uh, so any old wax, any uh, when they're cleaning out the the cells where the, the bees have hatched out, uh, that all has to be cleared away. You can then move on to nurse duties, which involves gathering the pollen and the nectar and any water that comes in uh, and, and feeding uh, the bees. Uh, you can then move on to become a forager uh, and then you'll actually go out, sorry, you become a guard bee, which means you, just, you stay at the entrance of the hive. You can then go out foraging, which means that you go out and find uh, the pollen or the nectar. Now you'll not catch it on camera, but literally, anyway, it's just the bees are flying in and out in all directions at the moment. I can definitely see they're coming, there you go, from across the glen somewhere. 
So the bees have all got dedicated roles that they progress through uh, to the life cycle. As I said earlier on upstairs, during the height of the season, bees will literally just work themselves till they die. They will progress through the ranks, they will go out as foragers, and they will uh, they will just exhaust themselves and they die off, either out there or just at the entrance of the hive. Totally normal. The last bees that hatch out towards the end of the season, end of summer and autumn, uh, these are the bees that will do less foraging and they're required to stay in the hive and, and hibernate through the winter. And then uh, as long as they've survived, which is, you've seen in previous videos is really important, then they become the first set of bees that go out foraging right now as the queen has started to increase her rate of laying eggs and producing new bees. So this one here, I mean it's absolutely incredible, just I love watching it, just seeing the amount of pollen that is coming in, just on their their knees, their pollen baskets. That's where you get the term the bees knees. So our bees here, they gather all the pollen and they put them in the baskets and their legs and carry them. And that's where that term came from. So the last one, I'll go and look at the the next hive up. You can see they just sometimes come in for a a wee rest before they land. So let's look at the next one. This was the one that was really quiet up the top and I moved it down here because I was worried about it. So here we go. Now if I put the camera down low, there's a lot of bees out and about here flying, which is really positive. Now when I'm watching these bees there's nowhere near as much pollen coming in. Oh, see I said about the wind? <laughs> they just blew all the bees into my face there. But there's not as much pollen, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on these bees. I'm not going to go in today. I'll give it a couple of weeks. But the key thing is that the pollen indicates that uh, the queen is laying and they're looking to feed uh, the brood that's in there. Now I'm watching. I can see, yeah, there's, there's a lady coming in with some... So there is some pollen, but when you compare it to the hive we just looked at, uh, it's nothing. But it may well be they're just developing a bit later. But the good thing for this particular hive is that, the, uh, that there's a lot of bees there. So that suggests all three have made it through the winter. The next task will be me, for me in due course is to go in and just check the state of the hive. So I'll probably do that around about mid-April bit later on. Don't want to go in too early, but I'll check for disease, I'll check for brood, make sure the queen is okay, and the pattern's good. Uh, but yeah, so that's just a wee quick update on the first whoop, <laughs> warm day. So the bees are, yeah, they're all keeping busy. So I will just end the video just now and hopefully catch up soon.